Hi, welcome to Brian Sews. Today I'd like to talk about buttonholers. I think buttonholers are something that a lot of people are interested in if they don't have one already. And there's two different styles of buttonholers, and I think that maybe there's some confusion about the differences between the two and which might be better for different people and different projects. So since I happen to have both styles of buttonholers, I thought I should put together a little video to talk about the differences. Um, so there's two main brands. There's the Singer came out with this, the newer style buttonholer in the 70s. I feel like this, the Singer came out with this one and I think they tried to improve upon the original buttonholer which was put out by Greist. And this buttonholer, you'll see branded under the Sears Kenmore brand. Uh, you'll see it under White and you'll also see it branded under Singer. Um, uh, the Greist came with a, uh, between uh, five and ten attachments or, or templates I should say. Uh, I think they had five, seven, and ten template uh, sets. Uh, the templates have a, a standard straight buttonhole and a keyhole buttonhole. You, you insert the template on this one, you insert the template into the bottom here, which means putting it in, you have to turn the, the buttonhole attachment upside down to put the template in, uh, which prevents you from doing it while it's on the machine. You, you can do it while it's on the machine, but it's kind of difficult. Um, this this buttonholer just the, both buttonholers attach to the uh, to the the uh, uh, what's it called <laughs> the uh, presser foot bar <laughs> both both attachments attach to the presser foot bar and uh, the thus the Greist I know for sure comes in slant shank low shank and high shank models. The Singer, I don't think, comes in a high shank. It only comes in a slant and a low shank model, as far as I know, but I could be wrong. Uh, the Greist has two basic adjustments, or, or really one adjustment. The, this knob at the top here, this will allow you to advance through the template design, getting to the same, so you can start the, your buttonhole in the same spot every time. This makes it really easy to line up the fabric. Uh, the, other adjust, the only adjustment on it is this lever here on the side has an N for narrow and a W for wide, and it gets basically wider as you go up. This controls the width of the sides of the buttonhole plus the width of the space between the sides. Um, I usually keep mine on maybe three. A lot of times what people will do with this buttonholer is they will set it for a wider buttonhole to begin with, and then they will double stitch around it with a more narrow. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of ways you can play around with this particular one. Uh, since this buttonholer not only moves the fabric through the buttonhole, but also does the zigzag uh, within the same mechanism, this buttonholer is appropriate to be used on straight stitch machines. So it definitely uh, increases the functionality of your straight stitch machine. It comes with a feed dog plate, and if you have to use this, then it's good to have one. It's, in my opinion, it's probably best to try to use this on a machine that doesn't require a feed dog cover plate. This is a lot of stuff to bounce up and down with the feed dogs if you have your, your uh, garment in there too. It's, it's, it's just, it can create inaccurate buttonholes for sure. Uh, the Singer buttonholer has a few more adjustments on it. Like I said, I feel like Singer came out with this one and tried to improve upon the Greist design. Uh, the main difference between this one and the Greist, the, as the Greist can be used on a straight stitch machine, the Singer must be used on a zigzag machine. Uh, which is why it's called the zigzag buttonholer. It uses the machine's zigzag setting to actually create the zigzag stitch. Uh, also, all this buttonholer does is simply move the fabric around as your machine is doing the zigzagging. Uh, again, this must be used with uh, the feed dogs lower or you can use the feed dog cover plate. So differences uh, or, or settings on this one. You have this first knob in the front here. This controls the width of the space between the two rows of stitches. Uh, this setting back here create is uh, basically controls the stitch length. So towards one is more towards a satin stitch and two would be a, a wider or a, a longer zigzag. The, the problem that I have with this machine is that, or with this attachment is that even at set for the highest setting, which is, which is one, this little knob here locks in the setting it still doesn't create an actual satin stitch. The, the, the length of the stitch is, is still a little bit too long for a satin stitch. And so the problem with that is that to get a, a nice solid buttonhole, you have to go around it twice. 
unfortunately, the well, or or fortunately, the the machine is this, this attachment is so accurate that many times when you go around the, the buttonhole again, the stitching will be directly on top of the previous stitching. So unless you slightly shift the fabric or you know or move it somehow, it's it's hard to create that perfect satin stitched buttonhole. Um, another main difference between this buttonholer and the Grice buttonhole holer is that the templates can go on top. So as this is attached to your machine, it makes it very easy. You can just pop the top open and stick a different template in. A lot of times you'll put this on the machine with your template, you'll realize that's not exactly the size I need. You can just pop it open and change it. With this one, you have to pull, pull the whole attachment off and turn it over. Um, let's see what else about this one. Something that's, that, that a lot of people have found is that, that, well, this attachment seems to be quite universal. This one, I almost feel like they, did, they designed it specifically with a Singer machine in mind. One of the problems that a lot of people will come across is even if they get the low shank model, they'll go to stick it on their low shank machine. And as when you lower, you know, as you're lowering the foot to lower the attachment down onto your fabric, the the lower, you know, the, the presser foot razor razor lever, razor lever, the presser foot razor riser will actually hit the top of the casing here, preventing the foot from coming down all the way. And if this doesn't come down all the way, then it doesn't have the ability to move the fabric around. Uh, you can get around that by removing the plastic case, and then you can usually drop your feed dog all the way down. Um, but then you kind of have this greasy, greasy mechanism back here, and it's, I mean, it's, it's just kind of, it's, it's not the, the ideal workaround. Um, there is another main difference between the two of these button holders is that this one um, works great for things like button-down shirts and thinner projects. Because it uses the, the needle bar as the, to, to actually control the, the mechanism inside the machine here, the higher you raise this off the bed of your machine, the less travel this will have. And there's a point where if you raise it too far, this will no longer activate the mechanism and it will just stitch in one place without moving. Uh, that can be a problem for things like uh, the waistband of a pair of jeans where you'll have at least two layers of denim and, and on one side you could have up to six layers of denim so it can create very thick fabric there. One way to get around that is to pound your waistband with a hammer first, um, but even then sometimes this, this won't work. Another disadvantage is, is that because this is moving the fabric back and forth to create the zigzag or the satin stitch on the sides of the buttonhole, with like say a pair of jeans, jeans you know denim is very it's pretty heavy and you can't just allow all that jean to be hanging off your your workstation and expect the foot to be able to move all that weight around. What you have to do is you actually have to support the jeans. I have a spider on me or something. You actually need to support your your jeans as you allow the foot to move back and forth. So you're kind of doing this and moving with the foot. It's it's. It's, it's not the easiest uh, procedure to get this one to work with thick fabric. This one has the advantage of, because you're using your machine zigzag stitch, all it has to do is basically move your fabric around the hole. Um, but it, it still has the same problem where if you lift it too far off the machine bed with thick fabric, this you know, uses the same mechanism, so this doesn't get enough travel to actually activate the mechanism to, to advance to the next part of the stitch. So the problem here, uh, can be solved with the, sorry, there's an ant crawling around here or something and I can feel it crawling on me. The problem is, or how you can, uh, get, I, I noticed that when I opened this, this up one time, I found inside the, the inside here, there is a screw here. So there is actually another adjustment inside the attachment here that you can unscrew and it's just it moves like a quarter of an inch if that and it basically will allow this attachment to be used with thicker fabric um, making this one much more versatile for doing the waistbands of like jeans or if you were doing a, a heavy wool coat and you were doing you know keyhole buttonholes this would be great for that you'll also notice that it comes with a lot more templates it comes with a lot of straight just straight buttonhole templates which are right here uh, they range in size from, what is this one, one and a half inches all the way up or down to uh